one of your chief challenges is hurting the cats, I think it's fair to say. And um, to the degree that there is any sort of schism between members and, and congregations like this one, a lot of it boils down to whether or not people are of the activist mindset or whether they're more of the spiritual sort. Um, I think, it, this may be generalizing, but I think that in some cases the more activist folks look upon those who have more spiritual concerns as sort of navel gazers and the, uh, the navel gazers look upon the activists as being a little bit too pushy. Um, I'm sure that you've encountered this kind of thing and I wonder wh wh what do you do to sort of hold these folks together in unity? It's one of the central tensions in, in many, many Unitarian Universalist congregations. The, uh, those who believe that um, their spirituality is in social activism and action, and those who believe um, that uh, they uh, come in our doors for um, a spiritual, uh, more inner experience. This is not unlike the, the, the difference between Emerson and Thoreau, for instance, is it? it exactly, and, and I think that it, it actually is a false dichotomy although, of course, people um, experience it in a very serious way. But um, the reason I believe that it's a false dichotomy is that if our principle is correct, that we are in a web of existence, then everything is interconnected. Um, after I realize on a spiritual, personal level that um, the neighbor next door who might be in Africa or Sri Lanka or actually next door, after I realize that that neighbor is myself, is part of the web of existence, and that all is one, after I reach that uh, spiritual uh, understanding, then it is, I think, my obligation to do all I can to help that neighbor or that other person. And therefore, the spiritual informs uh, the, uh, the, the social action. It might be well to talk a little bit for the person who may have stumbled upon this video, who's not a member of the church, maybe is thinking about it, but really doesn't know a lot about it, to talk about how serious the schism is. I mean, this is not, I, would, I guess I should leave it to you to sort of describe that, but is it a serious problem? Is it the kind of thing where we actually see bitter division in the congregation? Uh, we do often, uh, and I mean, there are some Unitarian Universalist congregations that are uh, oriented very much toward social action, and others that are oriented much more toward spirituality. And uh, many, many are like uh, this congregation, which is that there are a, a proportion, I don't know if it's 50 50 or 40 60 or what. Uh, that uh, disagree on that, uh, on, on which uh, is the orientation. Uh, so it is a, um, uh, a tension that runs through Unitarian Universalist uh, congregations and through the movement itself uh, at the national level, for example. Uh, what are we about and why are we uh, making these uh, political social statements? Uh, where does that come from theologically? And uh, for some of our people, um, it, is, it comes as much from political conviction as, as it does spiritual conviction. Um, it is our job as Unitarian Universalists, I think, and uh, we are on a free and responsible search for truth and meaning. It is our responsibility to find out why we do or don't act in the world. True, but I don't, in the years I've been coming to this church, I don't think I've ever seen anybody remove a shoe and throw it at anybody else. It's, <laughs> there's not, I don't think that there's a real violent strain of tension. It, it, it may exist, it may mm -hmm. be quite real, but I think the, the tenet of, of tolerance is actually practiced here. Wouldn't you agree with that? Yes, I, I, think, I think so. And, and also we do have to remind ourselves that political liberalism and religious liberalism are not necessarily the same thing. As we've we've heard fact, that, you know, that uh, confusion has actually been enunciated here from time to time. Right. Well, historically speaking, actually, one of the more interesting things about United States history is that fairly conservative people at one time, and that would be people who were upper middle class to wealthy, were the ones who were religiously liberal. That has now shifted, but the shift didn't occur until uh, roughly the time of the Vietnam War, which uh, uh, reoriented many, uh, many religious uh, uh, denominations in the United States. 
and uh, and cause the split that nowadays we see we call the culture wars to uh, and that kind of thing. That's actually an important part of our local history here because it was the Pillsburys and it was the folks from the Unitarian Society of Minneapolis who built the city and the, clearly those were politically conservative folks but uh, religiously liberal folks. Right. They they were educated and they believed in education and in science and therefore they were religiously liberal. But they had uh, they had the uh, investment in money and other things uh, in a society that functioned um, as they needed it to function. There does sometimes appear to be a tension in Unitarian Universalism between what we could call navel, navel gazing and uh, marching in the street. What really is going on though is what do we value most? Do we value the web of our existence that we are all of a part? If this is the case, we must act out of our understanding that all the universe is interconnected.